this mic to a more appropriate position. Is that appropriate? I mean, I would say so. I think it's uh, the best position if you ask me. How are you, AJ Gibson? Well, I know, I, I'm curious, what is your best position? Ooh, that is a, that is a great, uh, well, I said great. That is a great question during Pride Month. Uh, and that's something that we will keep private. I can tell you. Okay, well, we won't. All yeah, right, welcome oh, welcome whoa. to the pod. No, I didn't because remember, we right. are not doing I anything. I said recently, like okay. weeks ago. All right. Welcome to the podcast. If you listen to the podcast <laughs> regularly, you know exactly what we're talking about. We talked about uh, some wedding stuff and some things that we're doing uh, prior to the wedding with. Uh, he made me give up sex with my best friend Jackie I Denise. Um, she tried to make us give up kissing, which I was like, "That's that's ridiculous." So we're not doing that. With my best friend Jackie Grubbs. Jackie Grubbs. Um, so yes, it uh, it's 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 we're we're excited. I know we keep talking about the wedding stuff. And you guys, when is the, when is the wedding? Like when is soon. the wedding? It's so soon, and you soon. will you will get all the content. But uh, we just want to keep the date and everything private for now. Yeah, and also it's just the two of us today. Just the two, two of, of us. us. Well, it's it, it's our wedding. We month. can make it okay, if we that's... try. Just the two of us. Do do do. You and I. Mm. Did you enjoy that? Only because there's not room for a third person today, apparently. Wow. So we're excited. Wow. We are excited. Let's go. It's like a trial run for the rest of our lives. It's going to be just the two of us forever oh, wow. and for always. Oh, so my goodness. Let's see how this goes. Let's do a slow zoom on my face here. Uh, no, uh, no, we're <laughs> definitely excited. So uh, if you've never listened to this podcast, um, I'm Emil Ennis Jr. And this is my soon-to-be husband. AJ Gibson. And we are the host of Confess Your Mess. And every single week, we break down listener submitted secrets. Uh, you can submit anonymously. You can leave us a voice note. Um, it's very simple. You just go to confessyourmess.us. And we have different themes every single week. I believe this theme for this week is queer sex secrets and things like that. Because um, we're queer and we have sex. Whoop, whoop. Uh, and we usually have um, a celebrity <clears throat> guest. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's Pride Month. People get busy. We actually had a guest booked for it today. And also, to be fair, yeah. our our guest was very busy. Yeah. Didn't make it. Uh, and to be fair, I do have a TikTok right now that's about to hit a million views. So, like, low key, I kind of am feeling myself. I feel like a celebrity for like the last 48 hours. Interesting. So, I'm a, I'm a pretty big deal. I mean, the whole TikTok video is basically it. me slapping your ass. Yeah. And so that's it. So that that makes you a celebrity. To oops, I did it again. No, well, yeah, you have to watch it. I don't want to give it away. It. It's only five seconds long. Yeah, so five seconds don't long. Tell, don't tell them the whole thing. So they already <laughs> follow us on TikTok. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, that's a that's a good plug, AJ. Follow yes! follow AJ on TikTok at underscore AJ Gibson, and you can find me at Emil Ennis Junior thirty one. And on Instagram, you can find me at Emil Ennis Junior and at underscore AJ Gibson because there's that one person on both platforms one. who will not give one. up AJ Gibson. True story. I will tell you this really quickly. You know this story. One time you. Years ago, I tried to buy my Instagram name from the woman who owns it. Her name is like Angela Gibson. Mm -hmm. I was like, why the hell do you have AJ Gibson? Because mine's underscore AJ Gibson, mm -hmm. like you said. And I reached out a couple of times. The only thing she was posting was photos or videos of her little daughter doing ballet in like North Dakota. Oh, and she had like sweet. 100 followers. Yeah, it was great. But she would post like every few months. You know, it's not about the number and of followers. Like, hey. It's about the, the people well, who are I watching. Looked, yeah. I looked up. Her name was like Angela or Amy or something like that. You don't know her was, middle name though. I, I don't know. I, yeah, it was probably a J. I'm sure it's probably a Jane or something. Now. Angela Janet. Mm -hmm. But I did look up her name and I was like, oh, this is actually available at the time. This was years ago. Mm. So you could actually have your name and I could have my name. But she wanted AJ. She said no. So I offered her five hundred dollars. Said this would be a nice little like starter fund for your child's college. Uh, I got that line from Christmas with the Cranks. I was gonna Jamie say yeah, Curtis, yeah, yeah. And she said no. And this was at a time where I was dead broke. Five hundred dollars was a lot of money to me back then, and still a lot of money. And she said no. And I said F you, bitch. Oh wow. I in okay. my head. Well, let's bleep all it, of that. I said it to myself. Right. I said it to myself, but she never gave me the name, so I'm still underscore AJ Gibson. Got it. Twitter booted somebody off my name one All time. right, so we're going to go <laughs> ahead and get into the podcast. Um, so like I said, for this episode, the theme is uh, queer sex secrets. Um, so if you want your secrets on the pod, oh, yes. head over to confessyourmess.us. You can leave us. Oh, I already said all that. Remember? I know. Oh, no. Oh, what I meant to say was if you want to be our <laughs> messenger of the week. I was like, wait, what? Listen, I ignore you sometimes. Wow, our you do. messenger of the week. Uh, is pulled from comments on our Apple podcast. So mm -hmm. go give us five stars and leave us a comment there. Yes. Or from YouTube. We post these videos up on YouTube uh, about a week or so after the podcast goes live. So if you'd like to watch us as well, 
for reference, uh, see what kind of faces we're making at each other. Period. And also, uh, first of all, before we get into our messenger of the week for this week, I want to, we should highlight some of our... We wait, have a messenger who, who just, somebody who reached, reached out to me, commented on a TikTok or an Instagram and said, hey, Emil, doing that loop on a video. Mm-hmm. That's not who the messenger is. I know, so. but I'm saying, no. he said, how am I not the messenger of the week yet? I'm an OG. I've listened to every single episode from day one. Have you commented? And he said he did. Oh, uh, well. I might have missed it. We gotta I don't know. You, well, you should have screenshot that comment. We could have given him a shout out. But yeah. I will say, before we get into our messenger of the week, we want to just give, or at least I, because I'm doing this impromptu, because a lot of this is just improv spontaneous. Um, but a knows all of these people because they've been guests on the podcast we we don't ever give a guest a shout out so first of all shout out to rob anderson yes. uh, we went to his comedy show a few weeks ago and uh he's doing comedy shows all across the country and he just released his song um and it's amazing if you search on nothing for you yes is the name of the song if so you good. search on spotify it's under uh heartthrob and then i think on uh, Apple, he is still like whatever the old name is. But anyway, nothing for you. It's incredible. He it's- was on my radio show this morning. Mm-hmm. So so talented. Uh, popping up all over the country. Well, right not now. like this morning. It's like whenever you know this episode. Well, when I when, when I'm you tape this episode, right now, right, 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 this right, morning, right. Yeah. Also, so, shout out to uh, Drew Dorsey, best mm-hmm. friend Drew Dorsey, because she's in Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue right now, which is incredible. Um, who else do we shout out? Oh, uh, Lacey Mosley, who was our very first guest. The season finale of iCarly just happened. We're so proud of her. Um, oh, and she booked Lopez versus Lopez. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, a lot of successes lately. We have a lot. We'll we'll start doing that more often because we have really talented guests and friends who come on this podcast, and we just want to remind you to continue to support yeah, them. We could do a, like a guest highlight every now and then. Yeah. Okay, we'll work. We'll so that was that was that. that was three. So that's a very 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 proud of you and all. Also, I want to give a shout out to my partner Emil Ennis Jr., who appeared on the Real on Fox for three seasons. Uh, the show just went off the air recently. Uh, and uh, I, I'm so proud of you because the person you were the first day you stepped on that set and the man that you are now are very different people, and you grew so much. And we've both obviously, you know, I've also worked with many of the girls from The Real over the years, and they were always so kind and loving to you. Um, and unfortunately, the pandemic didn't, like, a lot of shows did not survive the pandemic, to be to be fair. Uh, but you were so great on the show. So shout out to the ladies of The Real. Also, Wendy Williams coming to an end. That's my show, so... All of our shows are going bye bye. Yeah, I will say. Uh, next. I will say that was a great time in life, and that was my first major regular TV appearance. Mm-hmm. And one day, maybe I'll tell the backstory of getting on that show and how difficult it was behind the scenes. But I'm so grateful for that opportunity and thankful that you uh, you said those those kind words. And yeah, we literally did that. Uh, during the pandemic as well to be able to do that regularly on that mm-hmm. show for uh, almost a season and a half uh, working from home. It was just a process. Like anyway, we'll this get into that another time. This is one of the hardest yeah. working men in the industry. I'm super, super grateful. And I can't wait to see what's next for both of us individually and collectively because mm-hmm. um, we have yeah. a lot of stuff we going on behind the, the scenes. So send out those good vibes for yes. us because we're constantly working. Okay, so our, our, our messenger of the week is... Bree since 88. She says, I'll read the first half and let AJ read the other half because it's pretty long. A little weekly vacay. Oh, I love that. Mm. Bree says, Amil and AJ are open and relatable. I love the easiness of how they communicate with each other. And I feel like I'm checking in with friends. Their guests come from various backgrounds and perspectives. But I think the coolest part is, oh, my God, they don't need a guest. Y'all, I did not oh, read this. come on. I did not come read this on. ahead of time. Okay, AJ, you read the rest. Wow. Well, let's just stop right there. That's amazing. Okay. At the, the episodes with only them are high key gold. What? With how terrible the world can be, it's nice to take a break and laugh. Also, check out YouTube for the videos because the facial expressions are A++++. Free. Exclamation point. Yo. Wait, what? We, uh, again, how is that happening today? We don't look we at don't the secrets before. We don't look at the... Like, we we pull things up and then we wait to read it Aww. live on the air. That just... Bree since 88, that just warmed my listen, heart and his heart. Because we are super excited about our guests today. Yeah. And they had to back out last minute. And, and it's a little frustrating, but it is what it is. And we were like, you know what? Our listeners deserve an episode. Yeah. Let's just do it ourselves. If that's not a lesson for you, Whoa. you are everything you need in the world. And we're learning that lesson. There was a song right in now. there somewhere, and I was trying to remember mm-hmm. what it was. But oh, speaking of songs, we're putting together like uh, the the songs for Walking Down the Aisle and the reception playlist. Well, we just and, got like, an email about our DJ. We're I saw a Zoom, so Zoom. Our DJ knows to play, basically play just Beyonce and Gaga the whole time. Listen, uh, it's going to be incredible. So, and, okay. So, let's get into uh, the pod with our very first secret. Okay. You ready, AJ? Let's do it. Okay. Anonymous 
N B is their name. Brooklyn. Brooklyn. I have family in Brooklyn, so I, I could. My best woman lives in Brooklyn. Oh, she does, mm-hmm. but her name doesn't start with N or B. I don't sure know what N B. Okay, they say last summer I was in the hot tub with my fiance's mom. Okay, the jets turned on and hit me right on the clit Ooh. in such a perfect spot. Wow! So I just kept it there and silently came. Oh, we'll take this one to my grave. Well, to, be clear, to, us. <laughs> to be clear, I do not have a thing for my fiance's mom. I just couldn't resist the jet stream. Hot tubs are a little gross to me. And I think this is one of the reasons. Okay. Hot tubs and pools. Just because you really, I know there's chlorine in there and like whatever, but you're just in everybody's like uh, bodily juices. fluids and juices mm-hmm. and everything. Um, have you ever had sex in a hot tub? Oh, have we? No, we haven't. Have you ever had sex in a hot tub or uh, uh, completed in a hot tub? Uh, no. Okay. I don't think I have. There was a time when I was 20 years old. Ooh. I was home for Thanksgiving. Going and back I, in time. I came out to like another group of friends. I, mm-hmm. I came out to a couple people that summer, and then I came out to like a few people going to this party at this, this house out by the lake where I grew up. And one of my buddies, his cousin was there, and he was a little bit older. just like maybe three or four, five years older than us. And they were like the cool ones. They were like the stoners, and they like like they had like a house. Yeah. So we'd go party at their house, and we were all like I don't know twenty, and we were all in the hot tub late nights, and all got really really drunk. And one by one, everybody started passing out. But the more drunk we got, the more I was like, he's like flirting with me. And mm. We stayed up the whole entire night until the sun came up the next morning. And at, at one point, I. I definitely was fingering him in the hot tub. Oh, wow. this is getting graphic, everyone. Yeah, sorry. Parental advisory, it, it, please. It is what it is. I'm a 20 year old, and I was I was experimenting. You were in learning heat, learning what I was into, and then apparently the finger. Uh, then he asked if he could uh, give me a blowjob. Oh wow! And I said I, I don't want to do it here in case somebody wakes up. I literally came out to them last night, and mm-hmm. if I tell my buddy, "Hey, I'm gay," and he's like, "I I support you." And then a few hours later, his cousin is like sucking my dick. Mm. That's a bridge too far. Yeah, That's a bit too much too soon. Yeah, yeah. So we went out to my Mazda Protege. It was mm. Burgundy. It was a, the tiniest car in the world. And I'm six foot five, and I don't know why I ever thought that was a good idea. And a half. Yeah, and 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 he he blew me in the car, and oh, wow. um, I fingered him the whole time, and uh, he growled the entire time. Oh wow! Aggressively. Wow. So yeah, not in the hot tub, mm-hmm. uh, but for for to this day, we still call him a growler because people know now. Mm. We talked about it later. I told his, his his cousin. Do I know this person? Who I also hooked up with once. So. Do I know the, the growler? Uh, you do. Yep. Okay. Well, his cousin used to randomly pop up and come stay with us for a week at a time. Oh wow! Yeah. yeah. So oh. I hooked, I've hooked up with both of them. Interesting. Also, both very straight. Interesting. Well, well, you know, there's some fluidity it's happening the there. The Kinsey scale. People. Yes. It, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So to this person, um, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. You, you, but they definitely. I mean, they are taken to the grave. That's why. That just really quick. That's why I love this podcast because you can tell us anonymously yeah. and get it off your chest, and we don't know who you are. And chances are, we're going to tell you something we did that was way worse and dirty. Right. So you feel great about it. At yourself. least AJ will. I, will. I don't think I've done anything dirty in a hot tub. Uh, I really don't think I have. I, I the the Jets did feel good when I was I was younger though. Um. Wait, you were one of those too. What? Were you sitting in front of the, you put your booty hole in front of the jet? Wait, wait, you put your wait. You put your I used to, when I was oh, yeah, when I, I was just, younger, I used to put my booty hole in front of the jet all the time and it felt well, I was so like, you like are I didn't bottom. know. Okay, this is this is TMI, but I remember <laughs> I remember one time your booty hole. when I was younger, uh this is so stupid. One time when I was younger, I took a and just, I remember going up to once? my No, but I'm just saying like oh, okay. I remember going up to my mom being like, "Wow, I was young." I was like you know, using, using like doing number two, it feels good. It feels really yes. good. I remember saying that to my mom, and I wonder what she was thinking in her head, like because the way I said, it, I was like, not just like it feels good, like your stomach. Like I was like, oh, it feels good. And anyway, so. there is a sort of a real talk, and, and a, gay men, straight men, everybody experiences this. There's something that's like borderline orgasmic when you just have a real good one, like a real good. Uh, okay, I, now that now no, that's a little. But that, there's something about it's like. Well, it wasn't orgasmic. No, for I'm me. not it saying a... it's like an orgasm. No, I get that. But about like, it. it's like, yeah. okay, can I tell one more story? What, what, is, what is your story, about AJ? A jet? Make it quick. She's gonna kill me. My little sister. <laughs> I won't say her name. My little baby sister. When she was little, we oh, just really pool. make it clear who you're we talking about. We have a swimming pool in our backyard. She was so young. She was probably like three or four or five, like mo at tops. And we still tease her about this to this day. 
she used to like we found her one time in the corner of the pool facing the jet with her legs kind of spread and her arms up on the side of the pool just grinning and we're like what are you doing so you did say her oh, name I did say her name so Shit. we're gonna bleep that everybody out everybody knows who she is or we're gonna bleep that out <laughs> but like, i think that's what the kids do it tickles she says it tickles and i was like oh, okay well you were doing it with your booty hole who knew mm. i knew I used to call my, uh, speaking of kids, I used to call my uh, penis a tail when I was younger. And when it started to get hard, I said, Mom, my tail, <laughs> my tail is it's like, it's, it's not. Anyway. You used to say that? Uh, yeah. We were taught that it was called a pea bug. It was called the tail. I, I specifically, How problematic is that? I don't know if you have an Ohio uh, Publix, but I remember being in Publix no. and my, my tail, my tail got, uh, I was young oh. and I didn't know what that meant. So it was just confusing. Okay. This next one comes from lesbian as all hell. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Chicago. Um, a Midwestern lesbian. Uh, side note, I have all these uh, decorations for a pride stream that I did the other day and I took them down. Mm. They're literally... Hold on, I just want to they're super you. cute. I'm leaning on one right now. Okay, it's way too far down the floor so I can't get it. Show but just them know this pillow cute. how cute it is. Oh, the pillow is cute. It's sort of like... It's like... It's pride colors but not really. It's, it's kind like, of like a hipster pride. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like they're not really like bright red and right. like yellow and orange. It's just... Right. Yeah. And then yours is like a deviation from the traditional colors. It's like red, green, oh, yellow. Oh, right but now like, I'm wearing colors. Yeah. So I thought our guest who was supposed to be on the show today might enjoy it, but mm. he's not here. So. Dum, dum, dum. Okay. <laughs> Lesbian is all hell Chicago. Okay. Looking back now, I was gay, gay, gay as a kid. Same. When I was eight years old and I straight up asked my babysitter if I could see her tits. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> whoa. I did not ask that. She refused, of course, and told my parents I was being a little weirdo, but they are the only ones who know I asked that to this day. Now I can see all the tits I want, consensually, of course. You know, I never had a babysitter growing up. Wait, what? Mm-mm. How? I, I can I can ask mom to verify, but I never remember having a babysitter. Your dad's also hella terrified that something was going to happen to you your entire life. I mean, I did. I did. Uh, I mean, no, because my sister. Tell the story about the time you were in Jamaica and you were on a horse or something out in the water. I was going to say the time I was locked in the basement by well, accident. That one, we've heard that one, I think. Um, well, in the well, I didn't know this until I got older, but. Like a year or two ago, we found out. Yeah, we used to go to Jamaica because I'm, I'm half Jamaican, and we would go almost every year. And I remember we went there for my. Uh, That's why are dogs named Kingston? Am I telling the story? Sorry, my bad. I am. <laughs> <laughs> that was in love, everyone. If you watch the pod or listen, you know. Um, but my great grandfather's 100th birthday celebration. I was in second grade. I was seven years old. We flew down to Kingston, and we were staying with uh, my mom's uncle, I believe. Uh, don't remember his name because we've lost touch. But uh, they took us to this beach. It was very secluded, but it was like a local beach. There was a uh, horseback riding that was happening on the beach. There was Escovich fish being made. They would catch the fish and then make Which, it in a hut. by the way, is like, can kill you. What? Escovich fish. Did you know that? Who said that? Or is Akian fish. One of those two can kill you. It's not it's like Escovich a, fish. The other one is then. It's, it's actually can be poisonous if it's, poisonous if it's not mm. prepared correctly. Your aunt's made it for me. Well, they've been eating it all these years, and they're fine. But Escovich fish, the, if you never had it, I'm going to have to make it for you. It's absolutely delicious. Like, the seasoning is just incredible. And they catch the fish and bring it right to the uh, the shack. And it was literally like a shack. And then they fry it up, and it was delicious. So, anyway, the horseback riding, though. I don't know if I asked or if I don't know how it happened, but I was riding a horse on the beach in Jamaica. And that it tracks. was one of my and like one of my favorite experiences. You will not sexualize my beautiful hey, save a horse ride account. My beautiful childhood experience. It was okay. one of the most beautiful experiences I've had. I found out a few years ago that apparently the whole time I was riding this horse on the beach, my dad was terrified. Like full blown anxiety attack. And uh yeah, he just he, yeah, he that's just how he is. He thought the horse was gonna swim out to sea with you. Wait, why did that story come up? So you said that because that explains why your parents never ever got you a babysitter. Like, they oh. didn't trust anybody with you. They, they, you were their baby. You were their pride and joy. To be continued, I'm gonna find out. Because I feel like I, I, there had to be a time where they wanted, like, a date night or something, right? Or Actually, maybe not. Go with that. Maybe not, yeah. I grew up in a large family, so all of us kids just babysat each other. It's yeah. Very problematic. Okay, let's go to the next secret. AJ. Well, I'm gonna read this one. Okay, which one is this? Uh, down here? Mm -hmm. Anonymous male. Ooh, we can know them. I Every <laughs> time. Because we know a man somewhere? Okay. <laughs> I just listened to the episode with the semen allergy and had to share that I have a semen allergy too. Relatability. Oh my gosh. We're Look form, at that. We're forming a community. Look people. at that. This is amazing. Uh, I. It makes my bussy swell. Oh. oh. Is it bussy or bussy? 
Bussy, right? It's like I a think butt it's pussy. bussy. Bussy. Oh, it's a bussy, like a yeah. butt pussy. Because if you say, if yeah, because if you say Not butt, like a, it's butt. But if you say pussy, it's pussy. So then it's, I feel like you can. I think it's You bussy. can say either way. I think you're right. I think the focus is the butt. So it's a bussy. Bussy or bussy. I feel like I've heard it both ways. Let's Let us know. know. <laughs> <laughs> it makes my bussy swell like nobody's business. And I don't swallow anymore because I feel like I'm drowning after. Oh, wow. Wish there was a cure because I'm such a cum pig. At heart. Oh, can this episode Not be called pig. Swollen Bussy? Um, or Come Pig at Heart. Oh, wow. Okay. That, that's real, though. Like, semen allergies, that's actually a real thing. So, okay. So, my. Some people are allergic to latex. Like I have condoms. follow up questions then. So, because okay, yeah. uh, this, this this makes me sad if you really are, like, yeah. if, you, if you love semen, which it sounds like you do. Well, if you're a, you're a cum pig. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we're laughing with you. <laughs> But if you are like that and you do love that, I want you to be able to experience that and enjoy it. So is there not like a, a pill or something you can take or some type of medication? Some sort of substitute, some semen yeah. substitute. Well, I don't perhaps. know. That's not the same because unless it's like what. So wait. So or, <laughs> you know, it's like they do in porn videos. They, I watched this movie years ago and like they were, had a fluffer on set and then a porn video and they had by the side of the man's penis, they had like a squirter thing to make it look like the ejaculation is more intense. Oh, wow. To, to like fake big you know cum scenes in, in porn mm. there's so much to bleep today. i watched on you know that network like vice yeah of course i used to watch it all the time because it would play the parkers on repeat but they have this <laughs> they have this documentary or this show and it was about sex workers and it literally uh was showing the behind the scenes and mm-hmm. i thought it was very fascinating not in like a sexual way it's just very fa- i i love we both love finding out about different industries well aj yeah. loves to be on facebook and scroll on those videos where people are making things cakes well, cakes, but then like I watch people make cakes. What? All it, the what time. were you watching that one time? Were they making like I, ice trays or something? It was like they, it was folding. Then, oh, I don't know what that was. Ice trays? I don't know. You're watching something. It looked like a, a this pink rubber or something that kept folding over and over again. They turned it. He just watches oh, all these no. random things. I watch people make candy. Oh yeah, it's like it's like melting. They keep like pulling the taffy and or like making it into hard candy. And then they break it into pieces. Yeah. I I love those. I love watching people make cakes. And I'm so fascinated with the idea of putting simple syrup all over cakes to keep them moist. Um, but then I was going down a rabbit hole and found out that makes them super, super unhealthy, obviously. Well, but you it know makes what? them taste delicious. You know what? I used to watch hairstyles for a while. People who were bald and had you know hair, what? Like, wigs. I was into that for a minute. You know what? What? See, I say you know what until he stops. So this is full circle moment because... Have I told this story before? No. Probably. No. Oh. It's full circle moment because our guest would like uh, some simple syrup or syrup on their cakes, but... Oh wow! But our not our guest. Or not well. Uh, well, you no. They are. Our, I feel our like me- all these a messenger. all of our messengers are guests this week because we don't have a guest. So <laughs> the, the, uh, anonymous male who listen, we may listen, or may not know. Th- there's nothing simple about my syrup. Oh wow! Whoa, swollen bussy and or bussy. We got to figure. It. You got to bu- let us bussy. know. You got to bussy. Yeah, I remember. B- bussy sounds weird. It's bussy. It's like a butt. Yeah. So I know. you say that with so much confidence right I now. Know, You're now. like, yeah, yeah, I know it's a bussy. I know, I, know it's, I know it's a bussy. Okay. We're not done just yet, though. We've got queer sex secrets. Uh, Ma- Michaela? Did I just call you Michaela? Wow. So, okay, so real talk. My co- co host of my radio show is named Michaela, and we host a show together, a national morning show, four hours a day. And I am not her. I am a mill. And so I we're, just called you Michaela. We're going to get into the final secret because I feel disrespected. Wow. But, Michaela, you know, I love you. She does think we're getting married, the three of us. Right. Okay, so uh, I'll let you do the final secret, too. Well, you're so generous I know. Today. I'm generous with everything. Okay. Ready? Jason, you male. You should be wondering if I want something. Why am I being so I nice? Know. Yeah. Go ahead. The bussy hungry. Jason, male, San Francisco. Oh. I'm gay, but I hate anal sex. Oh. Recently found out I might be what's called a side. Like, there's verse, top, bottom, and side. Oh, wow. I guess sides are folks who do everything but the butt stuff. Oh, wow. Are there any single sides in San Francisco? Just scream the name Jason in the Castro District three times and I'll appear out of thin air and we can get married. JK about that thin air art part, but I am looking. Interesting. This is interesting. I've never heard of a side a before. A side. Like I hear, I think like macaroni and cheese or like you know broccoli casserole, like traditional sides. Because you're always hungry. I know. That's very interesting. Okay, so they like everything, but anal. Well, here's the I thing. I know somebody like this. Here's the thing. Anal sex is wonderful, but I, that makes sense to me. Like I can see where if 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 everybody had uh, to take this to a a, a larger conversation because mm-hmm. I kind of talked about this on um, another network that I work on recently. We did uh, a whole pride thing and. I was supposed to be telling, you know, queer stories and my own personal experience. And I kind of I didn't want to get preachy, but you don't know uh, 
you don't know until you know, right? Mm-hmm. And so for this particular uh, situation, right, in the world, it baffles me that so many people are against people who are different. Right. And I say that because in what like logical mindset does it make sense that every single person on Earth yeah, who, who in this that? in this massive universe, we're just like a speck in this massive universe, that every single person, at least on this Earth, though, is going to have the same attractions, going to be the same. At, like, yeah, doesn't it? Like, who would want that? There's so much competition then. Like, if every single person was the same and we're all competing for the same exact type of person, that's no fun for everybody. Yeah. We all lose. The great thing about diversity is that there's something for everyone. Right. And that is okay. And not only is it okay, it should be celebrated. I've never really heard of the term side, mm-hmm. but I, I remember, and I was a little more judgmental back then, but I remember having a friend years ago in a previous relationship, and they uh, he was in a relationship, and they would not have, like, anal. They just would not have sex because they weren't into it. I don't think either of them were. I know one for, for sure was not into it. And I remember being like, wait, what? Then you're not gay. That's what I thought back Interesting. then. Interesting. He's like, no, I'm very much gay. I just don't want to have anal. I don't want it in my butt. I don't want to do it to somebody. I just don't want it. Do you say it like that? I don't want it in my butt. And I was just like, uh, and I was still like kind of young and arrogant. I was like, oh, I think you just haven't experienced it the right way yet. I mean, that's absurd to think about now, but back then, that's what I believed. Some people don't like it. Yeah, it's like it's like people who don't understand like bisexuality or mm-hmm. asexuality or or the difference between sexuality and gender. You know, and and, and, and there's so many layers to it all. But just let people be what they want to be. Let people be what they want to be. But Some also, people just love, and, like, and, yeah. and I don't want to, we don't want to come off as preachy, but also like, I think where I get frustrated, honestly, is there's so many resources and ways to educate yourself, right? Mm-hmm. And I know that our messengers and our, our, our listeners who are, are listening and watching this pod aren't like this. So this is for the people who are not listening and, and not maybe, watching. Maybe take this out into right. the world around you. But there's so much information out there that it really does baffle me that we can have, I don't want to call it ignorance, but it is ignorance and and just before you go condemning or judging one look inner and focus on you and what's going on in your life and then just let people live their lives and love each other i think that's actually the issue i think that's part of the root of the problem is that people don't want to focus on themselves they don't want to look at their own flaws and shortcomings Mm -hmm. so they want to point them out in others Mm -hmm. right Uh, we talked about this the other night mm -hmm. at your cousins yeah yeah they're, they're they're focused on you know what is it what is it the uh, the splinter in somebody else's eye, and they've mm-hmm. got like a log in theirs. I right. forgot the wording of it, but but they it, it's easy to throw stones in glass houses. Yeah, and it detracts from all the <laughs> that individual people do not want to look at in their own lives, um, and that's unfortunate. But it also gives you some some sense of peace if you are on the receiving end of somebody's judgment because you know it has nothing to do with you and everything to do with them. Yeah. Uh, and I think that is a message not just for the queer community, just for the month of pride. I think it's a message for all humans, 365 days a year. You know, what other people think of you, none of your business. Yeah. does not matter in any way, shape, or form. And that is something I've had to really work on and continue to work on in We've therapy both had for to. years. Yeah. yeah. It's easy to, 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 to hear, you know, a hundred positive things than one negative, mm-hmm. whether it's on social media or maybe it's a friend or a family member who judges or condemns you. I mean, you focus on the one. Think about it. Lady Gaga said it best. There could be a hundred <laughs> people in the room and 99 people support you. That's right. And it's that one person no, who says, no. F you, you f-. No, that's and you're like, oh my think, goodness. And that, oh, yeah. oh, it's not that. Oh, it's the I opposite. Think that's backwards. Oh God. Okay. Mm-hmm. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Bradley Cooper. You're one of the. Can we just talk about that for? Remember that time in life when uh, they were going on their press tour? Like that was just it was it was before the pandemic. I remember uh, what's her name uh, in the in the subway went viral for singing "Shallow" in the microphone, and all of a sudden she was on the Ellen Show. And then we went into a uh, a quarantine. That was just that just feels like ages ago. And it was. Did you think, speaking of sex, that they were going to f on that piano at the Oscars? It was an intense moment. Bradley and it was an intense moment I remember at the time I was at Clever and we were doing rumor patrol and that created like a lot of rumors I had every single week was like are Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper dating are Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper arena shake it was just wild um anyway y'all this has been a fantastic episode normally we would uh uh you know do with our guests you know confess your mess um I think 
instead of that today well we can't confess our mess our mess is we are stressed as uh-huh. all get out mm. with this wedding and uh hopefully you're not sick of us talking about the wedding but we really don't care because it is stressful um but yeah, we if you're not paying for it you don't get to talk about <laughs> right it. <laughs> but uh no i there are some things going on privately and i will say today and the last the last 24 hours have been really rough for me um and i'm not going to talk about it just because it's a private matter but um just know that when we do share our 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 content and 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 share you know photos and videos and all the different things that we share from the wedding I want you to know that we're sharing it, one, because um, it's an expression of our love, two, because I want to be able to look back years later and remember these moments, but also because uh, also there's so many people who aren't able to come who I want to experience those moments, specifically or family so members. so many people who can't even imagine the opportunity to marry the yeah. person they love all over the world. It's just we, yeah. we don't take for granted. We uh, Like we talked about TikTok earlier, and uh, we posted a TikTok and a Reels the other day. Um, first day of pride and it was a mantra i am safe or i am beautiful i am loved i am safe i am free i don't need to be like them i just need to be like me Mm. and there were quite a few comments because you know when you post these things it goes all around the world and people are saying i can't be safe yeah they're like i'm not free and it was it broke my heart because i think sometimes you know we do take it for granted i know we have our challenges and things that we're fighting for specifically in this country in this nation um but it really broke my heart to to think that there are people, which I already knew, but there are people who are seeing our love and seeing our, our expression mm-hmm. and they can't express and, and they can't um, be who they are and be free. So I had a friend from my childhood reach out to me a couple of days ago on the first day of Pride and come out to me at age 41 mm. and says only a couple of people know. And she works for a church. She's very much involved in her church and really struggling with it right now. And this is 2022. Yeah. And said that, that seeing our content has made her feel more comfortable in her own skin, but she still can't tell her family. So, so listen, the, the, the fight continues. Yeah. It, it is what it is, but we want to make sure that when you stop by our podcast every week, uh, you know that you are loved, you're safe, yes. we appreciate you so deeply Um, And also, in regards to the content of our wedding, we're sharing for a couple of reasons that Emil just mentioned, but we're also going to share, because we're going to look dope as f***. We're going to look so fly, and we're going to look so cute, and we've spent so much time on these looks, we want you to see them. And we are going to keep it coming. You see this right here, if you're watching, if you're watching on uh, YouTube, this is all, oh wow, it got stuck. It's never ending. It's never ending love and fabulousness on this podcast, and we will continue to shower you with pride and love and just uh, swollen bussies or bussies. bussies. Uh, And yeah, anyway, this has been a fantastic episode. (laughs) This, uh, again, it was a rough 24 hours for me. It really is never ending. Oh no, this is so long. So we are so happy that you joined us um, for this episode. We really do appreciate it. And um, make sure, like AJ said, uh, go to Apple Podcasts, rate, comment, five stars. Spotify, leave us five stars. Leave us a comment. YouTube, YouTube. like, comment. And also share our podcast. Like, we don't, we, a a lot of you will send us messages, but like, share your Insta stories. Like, we love when you tell us we're the best podcast on the entire planet. Right. But it means a little bit more to us when you share it with your friends and family. Right. All right. Bye. Bye. Confess your mess. Confess Your Mess is a Straw Hut Media podcast produced by Ryan Tillotson and Frank Driscoll. Thank you so much for listening and don't forget to subscribe and share. And if you have a secret you want to share, go to confessyourmess.us to submit. Your secret could end up in the show.